All right, everybody, here we go. We're going to take a look at the next chapter, going back to proportions. Just wrapped up some inequalities. That was awesome. Kind of reminds me of the Wizard of Oz. We're not in Kansas anymore. Dude, we are not in inequalities anymore. Let's do proportions. And again, Wizard of Oz, I think, you know, lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. Uh, we are going to do ratios, decimals, and percents. Oh, my. Ratios, decimals, percents. Oh, my. Oh, my gosh. It's going to be stuck in my head all day. That's all we're doing in this section. We really need to be able to do this well for this whole chapter uh, and, and what's coming up the rest of the year. So let's get really, 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 really good at this. So I like to think of basketball, and there's Mr. Sullivan and Mr. Kelly, my two good friends, chilling. And they actually kind of remind me of The Wizard of Oz, too. Remember uh, the lion and the scarecrow? Uncanny resemblance there. Um, Awesome. So we're going to talk basketball, though. Let's talk basketball. So they both like basketball, and they both think they're pretty good. So one day they go to the gym. Mr. Sullivan, he knocks out 17 out of 20 free throws. Mr. Kelly, whoosh, he knocks out 15 out of 18. So I'm thinking uh, they both think they're awesome. They both think they're the better shooter. So who is better at shooting free throws, at least this day? What do you think? Well, it's kind of hard to tell, isn't it? So they both look pretty good, actually, here. 17 out of 20, 15 out of 18. That's pretty great. Is there a way we can definitively tell, hey, who had a better day? Yes. So to tell, it would have been just much easier if Mr. Kelly would have just taken two more shots and told us what he made out of 20. Like, let's pretend that he made uh, 15 out of 20 instead of 15 out of 18. This would have been a much easier problem because you can compare 17 out of 20 to 15 out of 20. You'd see Mr. Sullivan would have been the winner, but that's not what happened. I'll write that down. That's not what happened. He only took 18 shots. His cardio got the best of him. He couldn't take any more. So how are we going to do this? Well, we need to change the format of this. Uh, the fraction is great. Sometimes we want this, and this fraction is really going to be a ratio. He makes 17 out of 20 shots. But I want to switch it over to something a little more user-friendly in this situation, to a decimal. So really, what is 17 divided by 20? Remember that fraction bar just means divide. It's 0.85. So really, 0.85 can help me compare. So I can compare that to, hey, what is Mr. Kelly's decimal? Well, he made 15 shots out of 18 total attempts. So he made 0.8333333 forever so 8.3 with a little fraction bar on top so now i can tell this is much more friendly for me to compare who did better would you rather make point which is bigger 0.85 or 0.833 actually sullivan is the winner he has a much better shot or it's pretty close uh but in this case he won also sometimes when i'm talking about how well do you do something i may want to change this to a percent i can also say hey he makes 85 percent of his shots how do I do that? Well, you just move this decimal two places to the right. So we're going to move it and now talk about percents. Or you can say Mr. Kelly makes 83.33333 forever percent of his shots. That's what we're going to do is we're going to kind of toggle. I don't know if that's the right word. We're going to go back and forth from a fraction to a decimal to a percent. And because in certain situations, some are better than the other. So in this case, I'd rather see a decimal or a percent. I can compare those much easier than that fraction or that ratio right there. Awesome. Let's do it. So we're just going to do a ton of reps here, knock these bad boys out, and then you'll get super good at these and be super glad you did it. Let's start with this. So remember, ratio is just a fraction. Uh, so what is 2 divided by 5? Maybe you know this one. Maybe not. If you don't, just type it in. What is 2 divided by 5? It is 0.4. So we can come over here to decimal land and say, hey, you are 0.4. So I'm going to take a fraction and make it a decimal. Then I want to turn it into a percent. How do I turn it into a percent? Well, I'm just going to move this decimal over one, two places. So this will turn into 40%. Isn't that awesome? So awesome. I love it. Uh, and that's it. What if I just give you the decimal? Can you go straight to the percent from here? Sure, if I got 0.42, just slide this decimal over two places. This turns into 42%. How do I go backwards? We're not gonna do a ton of this. I'm gonna show you here at the end. Let's just, let's kinda turn all these into percents right now. Let's just go ahead and knock this out and then we'll go back to the fraction. Um, what is this? 0, 0.0, so you're moving it one, two places. So this actually turns into 8%. So just be careful there. Two decimal places here, we'll move it to where? It'll move it to 14.5%. So we're going to do a ton of this. It's going to be second nature to you. Just move that decimal to the right. Can we go backwards? Sure thing. Let's go backwards. If I give you this, 
percent and we go to decimal well where is the decimal we don't write it but really this is 36.0 there's a decimal here there was a decimal here after the 8 after the 42 there's a decimal which just would take forever to always write it so the decimal is here we're going to move it two to the left to go backwards so this will become 0 0.036 so we're going to just move the decimal back to where it was the opposite of how we were going that way so look at this we've got four so i'm going to move it two to the left so make sure you introduce that little zero in front this will be 0 0.04 so a little different than the top one 40 percent versus four percent big difference if you were taking a test or shooting free throws or something uh, big difference there between four and forty percent how about this remember the decimals out here so we're going to move it one two to the left so i have 126 percent i'm actually above 100 percent uh 1.26 that's how i shoot free throws 126 percent uh actually i'm closer to four percent pretty rough all right so here we go how do we turn this into a fraction and again i'm not going to uh, hammer these on you because we just we're not going to use it too much but it basically you just write it as you read it if I want to come back over here to ratio land this is just know your place value so the first place value here this is tenths the second place value here is hundreds so if I read this this is 42 hundredths so it's 42 over 100 isn't that cool this is what place value the second one so tenths hundredths this would be eight one hundredths so all you gotta do is read it out loud so I've got tenths hundreds what's the next one you got it thousands so it's a hundred and forty five thousandths this is thirty six hundredths this is point oh four tenths hundreds again so I'm in hundreds uh, four hundredths and then what is this one you have one whole and what do you have you have twenty six hundredths so that is one and twenty six hundredths kind of a nasty mixed number there there is also I'll show you this little nice trick on the calculator I hope your teacher doesn't get mad at me if you know this little trick but what was that first one we said something like um, well I can't see it was it 0 0.4 0 0.42 uh, so if you have this decimal and you really want to turn it into a fraction you can just hit math frac there's a little math button right under the alpha right here can you see that math the very first one is fraction you can math frac all day it's gonna tell you 21 over 50 21 over 50 oh my gosh wait how do I get a different answer Dude, it's not a different answer. These are equal. These are the same thing. It's just reduced. If you divide both these by two, you'll get that. So technically, you should reduce. Like I know four goes into eight two times. Four goes into 125 times. That's really two over 25. So you can reduce those bad boys. But again, I'm not going to go crazy with that. If you can kind of get a, gen a gen generic, general idea of what's going on here, uh, I'm pretty cool with that, being able to write it. Awesome. So I want you to try some. Fill in this table right now. So take this uh, fraction, turn it to a decimal, to a percent, take this percent, fill it in, fill in all the blanks. Pause it, really pause it, and then I'm going to throw the answers up. Good luck. All right, here we go. Here is the table filled out. I uh, check these, make sure you got them right. You probably should reduce this bad boy here too. I think two goes into them both. So if you put three, 50th, you're a boss. That is like next level. Reduce that bad boy. You're good to go. Awesome. That's what we're going to do with these. Uh, so I like that table because it looks pretty. Sometimes I may just straight up say, hey man, can you rewrite this? Because that's what's going to happen in real life. I'm going to need to switch gears. So I may give you a percent and say, hey, can you write this as a decimal? No problem. Just move the two decimal places. So it's really 0.284. So a lot of times when I've got like a little word problem or situation, I'm just going to say I need to change gears from one to the other. So let's get into when we want what. When do I need these different formats or views or whatever? Let's talk about Mr. Sullivan. He loves flowers. Here is a, one of his fantastic bouquets. We've got pink flowers and white flowers in there. So when we think about ratios, this is all about ratios. There's really two types, and we're going to use this all coming up here. We're going to go ratio crazy. So you've got two types. You've got, I can think of a part to a part or a part to a whole. So part to a part means what's the ratio of pink to white? So there's a bouquet, there's lots of parts in it. There's a pink part and a white part. So right here I have one, two, three, four pink parts. So I could say something like it's four to one, two, three parts. Or I like the fraction version, we're gonna say four is to three. So we did this early in the year. Hopefully you're pros at this, it comes back to you just like riding a bike. How about the ratio if I say white to pink? So the order matters. This would actually be the ratio of three to four. So these are different ratios. So the order matters. Whoever comes first is on top. Okay, can I change gears here and say part to whole? So instead of saying pink to white, 
I'm going to say pink to total. There are one, two, three, four pink flowers. How many total flowers are there, though, in here? There are seven flowers. So sometimes I want to know, hey, what is the part to the whole, not like the ratio of like boys to girls. It's girls to the total people in class or something. So what's the ratio of white? I know there's three white and there's seven people. So if I'm thinking about percents, because I've got fractions, I can make these decimals. You can always make a fraction decimal. Which one would make more sense to make a percent? Would you make a part to a part of percent or a part to a whole? It's the part to a whole. So this is the one we turn into percents. I gotta get rid of that question mark then because it's not a question anymore. When you have what part of the whole, that's when we're talking about percent. What percent of the bouquet is pink? What percent is white? And then you can do things and say, hey, four out of seven. So if I really want the percent, I can say four out of seven, and that's a crazy decimal. We're just gonna round it to two decimal places because that is a hot mess. Uh, it was 0.5714, and I'm just gonna kind of round it to there. Or you could say it was 57.14%. Awesome. Doesn't make really much sense to make these percents. You could still make them decimals. This would be 1.33 is the ratio. No problem there. We're definitely gonna make everything decimals. But with percents, uh, this means per 100 or part of the whole. Awesome, I love it. Let's do, is this the last problem already? We're cruising, I thought this would take forever. You guys are crushing it. All right, Mr. Bruss has a nice healthy lunch here. Six cookies and four, month, four muffins. Um, what is the simplest ratio of cookies to muffins? So what, that means just tell me the ratio. Cookies to muffins, six to four. But then because I said simplest, I really want you to reduce it. So divide both these bad boys by two. So he has the ratio is three to two. You can make it a decimal, it's 1.5, but in this case, I want it as a ratio. There it is. Can you tell me the ratio of muffins to total? So this is a part to a whole. We have four muffins. What, how many do I have total? Oh, I have six and four. I have 10 total items. You gotta add them together to get the total. So you gotta do that math yourself uh, to see how many total snacks I have in my lunch. Again, it says simplest, so I gotta reduce. Two goes into the top two times, two goes about five times, so two fifths. So two fifths of my lunch is muffin. That is a awesome lunch. Uh, what percent of his lunch is cookies? Oh, there we go. So again, if I'm talking percent, I'm talking part of the whole. So I have six cookies out of 10. Whoosh, maybe you know what that is. Maybe you need to type in your calculator. Six divided by 10 is going to be 0.6. That makes sense. Mr. Brust, you don't need a calculator. Why? It's six tenths, right? That is literally six tenths. That is the tenths place, six tenths. Awesome. Uh, but I don't want the decimal, I want the percent. So what does that mean? Move that decimal two times. We're talking about 60% of his lunch is cookies. That's the way to live life right there. 60% of your lunch, cookies. All right, if I have 36 cookies, how many do you think I would need, uh, how many muffins would I need to keep that same ratio? Well, let's think about this ratio. Remember, it was what? Uh, what did we say? Let's just be careful we label everything here. It was six cookies. I'm just going to label it, make sure I'm cool here, to every four muffins. So to keep this exact ratio, so this ratio, if I divided that out up here, six is to four, that is 1.5. That is my ratio. I need to keep that 1.5 ratio, but now I have 36 cookies. Ooh, 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 ooh. Double down, that's a big lunch for Mr. Bruss. The question is, well, how many muffins need to go here to keep that exact ratio? So there's a couple different ways to do this. I just want you to think about it for now. The goal is that we always keep this ratio of 1.5 or six is to four or three is to two. So how are you gonna get this number to keep it the same? Well, I look at this, so like for now, we're gonna do a couple different ways, but how do I turn six into 36? Well, I just times it by six, didn't I? It's six times bigger. So what do I need to do to my muffins? That's right, I need to also make it six times bigger. It's gotta keep that nice ratio. So I want that ratio in there. So if I times the top by six, times the bottom by six, it's 24. And then double check it, 36 over 24 had better be that same 1.5 ratio or else I messed it up. So let's double check it, 36 over 24, yes, it is 1.5. Just like three over two is 1.5, just like six over four is 1.5. They all have that same ratio. Maybe you see where we're going with this with our proportionality and finding K, that's where it is. So this is a great warm up section here. Uh, get really, really good at some of these skills, get their maths on, you'll be good to go. All right, that is it. 
Uh, good luck on the practice. Grade those answers. Take the master check. Peace out.